Like many mature business applications, FileMaker Pro provides preference settings and options that enable you to choose various configurations. After installing the application, you'll find it worthwhile to take a look at the preferences settings to see what the options are and how you can configure them to suit the way you work. FileMaker provides two different kinds of preferences accessed through two separate dialogues. One for application preferences that apply to everything you do in FileMaker, and another for options that are specific to the current database file. There are a few differences between the preference settings that are available depending on what computing platform you're using, and they're also accessed a little differently. On macOS, you can access the Application Preferences dialog by going to the FileMaker Pro menu and choosing the Preferences command. As you can see, the Application Preferences dialog has a number of tabs, and when it first appears, the default General tab is showing. Now, if you're using the Microsoft Windows operating system, there is no FileMaker Pro menu, and the Preferences dialog is accessed by using the Edit menu instead. To enable you to see what that looks like, I've set up a remote desktop session to a workstation that's running Windows 7, so we can look at the Application Preferences dialog presented by FileMaker when it's running on the Windows platform. Here, you can see a copy of the WorkFile 2 file, opened in FileMaker Pro on a computer running Windows. As you can see, the file itself looks all but identical to the copy you've seen running on the Macintosh platform. Also, as I mentioned, there's no FileMaker Pro menu on the Windows platform, and the Preferences command appears instead at the bottom of the Edit menu. As you can see, the Application Preferences dialog is comparable on Windows, with the General tab showing by default when the dialog first appears. However, there are a few differences in the details. If you'll bear with me, I'm going to do something a bit tricky here so we can view the Windows and Macintosh versions of the dialog side by side. You wouldn't normally expect to see both versions of this dialog at the same time, but with both dialogs in view, let's first walk through the available settings in the macOS version of the dialog. The first option allows you to disable or enable FileMaker's drag and drop text selection feature. It's on by default. It's a useful option in some circumstances, but if the users of your database are in the habit of making uncontrolled mouse moves, which may lead to some unexpected edits, you might prefer to disable this feature. FileMaker provides an option to keep track of recently opened files. This allows you to select them from a submenu on the file menu. By default, the menu will track the last 10 files opened into FileMaker on the current computer, but as well as turning this feature off and on, you can also change the number of files to be tracked, up to a maximum of 30 files. As I've mentioned previously, FileMaker presents a default window view when you create a new database file. In FileMaker 12, the default view was Table View, whereas in FileMaker 13, the default view is Form View which appears in layout mode with the field picker displayed when you create a new file. In either case, once you get past the basics, you may find that you prefer to visit the Manage Database dialog to add tables and access more advanced options. Here in the Preferences dialog, you can choose to go straight to the Manage Database dialog from the outset if you prefer. As you work with FileMaker, you can reposition dialogs, as I've done with this Preferences dialog, and many dialogues can also be resized. When you make these changes, FileMaker remembers the last size and location of each dialogue. The Reset button here in Preferences allows you to reinstate all the default dialogue settings for size and location. Each instance of FileMaker can have a name that identifies the workstation. This starts out as the username of an account on the current workstation, but you can enter a different name here. The name entered here stays the same even if several different users take turns using the computer, as it identifies the computer rather than the user. So the label here that says username may be misleading in some circumstances, partly because the name here identifies the computer or workstation rather than the specific user, and also because the user can edit the name at any time, overwriting it with any name of their own choosing. FileMaker Inc. issues occasional updates, and from time to time, new versions of FileMaker are released. Using application preferences, 
you can opt to have FileMaker show an alert when either an update or a new version becomes available. Of course, the notification will depend on your computer having a live internet connection. Now, as I've been talking, you may have noticed that all the controls on the general tab of the macOS Preferences dialog are also present in some form on the general tab of the Preferences dialog FileMaker presents on Windows. But there are some extra options in the general tab on the Windows version of the dialog. Specifically, Windows includes the ability to increase the size of the window contents, to set the interface language, and to specify font smoothing. macOS does have some comparable options, but you set them up using preference controls at the operating system level rather than within FileMaker. Now let's take a look at the Layout tab of the Application Preferences dialog. I'll set it up again so we can see both the Windows and macOS versions of the dialog at the same time. Notice that for the Layout tab, the options are identical on both platforms. In fact, that's true for each of the remaining tabs of the Application Preferences dialog. The first option here changes the way you choose tools when you're designing screens and reports in FileMaker's Layout mode. If this option is not selected, then every time you finish an action in Layout mode, the Selection tool will become active. So, if you're drawing rectangles, for instance, you'd need to choose the Rectangle tool again before drawing each new rectangle, whereas if you've chosen to lock Layout tools, each tool will stay selected until you specifically choose something else. Next, by default, FileMaker adds newly defined fields to the current layout. This may help you out when you're just starting out with a new file, but once your file has layouts organised the way you want them, you probably won't want FileMaker messing them up by adding fields without asking you. So I'm going to suggest that you turn this option off and only turn it on for periods of time when you decide that you specifically want it. Traditionally, FileMaker has generally saved all layout changes automatically. For example, when you leave layout mode or navigate to a different layout without showing you a dialog prompt. However, you can choose to have FileMaker prompt you to save changes instead giving you an option to discard changes if you choose. I find that I rarely want to discard layout changes, so most of the time I prefer to have this option turned on. You might like to do the same in your copy of FileMaker. Next, FileMaker provides the Memory Preferences tab. Again, identical options are presented on both supported desktop platforms. The first option in the Memory tab is the setting for file cache size. The best size of file cache depends on how much memory is installed on your computer and also on what kind of work you're doing, how big your files are, and how many files you're likely to have open at one time. If you have plenty of memory installed, setting a larger cache size is worth considering. In this case, I'm going to double the default size and set a new cache size of 128 megabytes. However, the change won't take effect until I relaunch the application. Meanwhile, by default, FileMaker writes changes back to disk progressively as you work. For most purposes, this is ideal and allows FileMaker to work efficiently without getting in your way. However, you do have the option to have FileMaker save cache contents by the clock if you wish, and here in the Memory tab you can make that choice. Now let's look at the Plugin Preferences tab, which shows a list of any plugins that are installed. A few plugins are available free of charge from their creators but the majority of plugins must be purchased from third-party developers. Plugins, sometimes called extensions, extend FileMaker's capabilities in a surprising variety of ways, providing additional features and functionality. Once you've installed a plugin, it appears in the list here, and you can enable and configure it from this panel. The Font Preferences tabs are also similar on Macintosh and Windows, save for the fact that the default font is different on Mac and Windows. Actually, since one of the great things about FileMaker is that it's cross-platform, I think it's generally a good idea to use a font that you can expect to be installed on both platforms. So I'm going to suggest that you consider using Verdana as the default font for the Roman alphabet, because Verdana is most likely present and renders similarly in different operating system versions. Also, if your database will have more than one font input method for different languages and character sets, you can control the input method and font locking behaviour in the lower part of the fonts panel of the Application Preferences dialog. 
All the settings we've just reviewed control the behavior of the FileMaker application, regardless of which database file you may be working with. But there are a separate group of settings that are specific to each file, and these settings are accessed in a different dialog by choosing the File Options command from the File menu. Notice that the title of the dialog says File Options for Work File 2, which signifies that any settings chosen in the dialog are going to apply only to the currently active file, which as it happens right now is the Work File 2 file. The default tab in the File Options dialog is called Open, and it provides you with a couple of important controls that determine what should happen whenever the current file is first opened. To begin with, if you've set up password security on a file, you can set the file to automatically log in with a particular set of credentials whenever it's opened. You need to think carefully when configuring this option, or you may defeat the purpose of having file security. More about that later on. However, when you start out with a new file, FileMaker automatically creates a default account called admin, and by default, all new files are set up to log you in automatically to the admin account, which is what we're seeing here. When you decide you want to make a file more secure by configuring accounts and passwords for the file, you'll want to visit the File Options dialog and enter some more appropriate settings, so that the file will either prompt the user to log in, if the login option is turned off here, or perhaps log the user in automatically with whichever account you specify here. If you enter the name of an account that has a password, but you leave the password field blank here, FileMaker will prompt the user to enter the password for that account when the file is first opened. As you can see, the other option provided in the Open tab allows you to specify which layout the user should see first when the file opens. So, for example, if you've created a splash screen layout or a menu layout for your file, you can choose it here to ensure that whenever a user opens the file, they'll start from the appropriate place. On the second tab in the File Options dialog, you can control spell checking behavior for the current file. If you want spelling checks enabled, you have to turn the feature on here first, and then you can selectively apply or disable it on a per field basis when you're designing your layouts. It's generally a useful feature, so for most solution files, it will make sense to leave it turned on and disable it specifically for individual fields where it's not required. The Text tab of the File Options dialog has some text handling options allowing you to enable smart quotes behavior that automatically converts apostrophes and quotation marks to directionally curled typesetting quote marks. Here you can also enable standardized line wrapping behavior for Asian languages and separately for languages that use the Roman alphabet. In either case, unless you specifically don't want words or phrases to break to a new line, you should leave these options checked. Also in the File Options text tab, somewhat idiosyncratically perhaps, are options that control the way regional settings for number, date, and time values are applied in your file. A file inherits embedded number, date, and time formats from the computer where it's created, but of course it can then be used on other computers that may not have the same format or regional settings. You can choose to have the file always use the number, date, and time formats for the computer it's being used on, to always ignore the computer's formats and use the number, date, and time formats embedded in the file, or you can have the file throw up a dialog whenever the file's inherited formats aren't the same as the current computer's formats, letting the user decide on the fly which formats are to be used for the current session. The option you can see selected here, Always Use Current System Settings, works for a variety of situations, and it's the default in any new file. Lastly, at the right is the Script Triggers tab. Here, you can specify scripted actions to be automatically triggered when the file opens, when it closes, or when a new window is created or dismissed. Scripts are saved sequences of commands or actions that you can create and store within the file. So this feature is one of the ways FileMaker allows you to build workflows and to apply them automatically.